Welcome to Pod Meets World. I am Danielle Fischel. I'm Will Friedle. And I'm Ryder Strong. And we are joined today to talk about episode number 104, Corey's Alternative Friends, which uh, is the very first episode where Topanga appears. And uh, we are thrilled to have David here. Let's jump into... My first episode. I've, I've now watched three episodes. We've done three recap episodes that I haven't been in. And so I'm <laughs> We really... get to do one with you. Yes. I am sorry. I've, I said this to you before, before we even started this. I don't think Ryder would disagree with me. I think if you put up a list of the most important Boy Meets World episodes, this has to be at or near the top of the, every list. I this, think it's the top. I, I agree. For me, I think it's the and, number and, one know, it, most it, important episode. What was so funny about watching it overall was how... Um, monumental this episode is in my mind as an experience but actually how kind of slight it is like especially my involvement like i thought i was a huge part i was being, yeah. but but what and that that's because of the experience of doing it this was the episode where i became a part of the show and i think this is the episode where i learned how to be in a sitcom and what you know how to get laughs and we can talk about like i specifically remember the moments we can talk about but also i remember watching the show on tape night and seeing the reaction to the topanga Corey relationship yep. and realizing oh this is the show like this is what is going to drive um boy meets world forward uh if, if for me and 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 so yeah and watching it, it i was just like oh yeah this it's still it's all there uh that yeah. you know Corey always needed a, a romantic foil right or uh, another character to bounce this off of and it's like you couldn't you couldn't get a better person than danielle playing topanga yeah. it's just oh, magical you. and there was more of the family dynamic and, and we see uh, sean in the family house sean is in the family house yep, the was audience the time, was yeah. interactive for the first time yeah. ever i mean this this show this episode hits so many different notes that just, I think, changed the whole ballgame for the series. I really do. David, as the director of this episode, do you remember the tape night? No. No. <laughs> I, remember, I remember tape nights in the early going as raucous. Yeah. And, and raucous for all sorts of reasons. Like an audience is a, is a new cast member. Yes. So as, as cast original cast members, you suddenly have the 200 people who haven't rehearsed. <laughs> yeah, right. Who knows what they're going to do? And, and also, I remember for Bill Daniels, a, a wonderful man. I mean, oh, he, yeah. he, I mean he can't, however much we love Bob Young and D David Kendall, Bill Daniels is yes. the same handful of guys who are really special. Man. Um, he, he oh no, I think it was very it's weird to him. Changes, you know, Michael would change things. And Michael would get, no, it was, it was a whole, it was like a hell's a pop. It, it, it was great. So that's what I remember. And I can't imagine that the fourth episode was any different. No, it was actually even the more so. Like Will yeah. said, this is the first time we've heard, you know, Eric uh, has that line about getting the good hair and the girls went, Whoa! And that's the first time that happened. Uh, and then there's a Beavis and Butthead reference. Which and the all, audience yeah. clapped and screamed for Beavis and Butthead. So if anything, it had they had just started to get, you know, noisy. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. also, I wanted to put this off at the top of the episode. You know how much of a, of a television fan I am, especially old sitcom. I love it so much. And I went back and I did some research about, and this again shows how our show is constantly overlooked, about... Characters that either started as secondary characters or were brought on later in the se uh, later in a series that changed the entire dynamic, and we're talking Klinger from Mash, mm -hmm. Fonzie from Happy Days, Urkel from uh, Family, Family Matters. Matters, Woody on Cheers, Andy in the Office, and not on uh, not a single list is Topanga mentioned. But it was wow. it was episode four. Well, one, here's the, but again, Fonzie was on from the pilot. So, right. you know, these are the Klinger was on from the pilot. They had smaller roles, but were then brought on as as regulars on the show that then changed the dynamic of the show. And it's one of those things where uh, your husband and I were talking about this, Danielle. Everybody, when they go back and they think of Boy Meets World, I think they remember Topanga being on the whole show. Right. Yeah. People are so, always shocked. When I'm like, oh, I don't think I was in that episode. They're right. like, what? So that's one of the things. It's, it's you've become so, so uh, ingrained with the show that the idea that you started four episodes, you weren't on there. Were any of those names you listed women? 
No. Oh, hmm, interesting. No. interesting. I, well, there you go. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Interesting. No, no, what no, you're you saying go. is that yeah, there, there are go. no women, Amazing. apparently, there that have really changed on the show. Any, not on any of the lists I read. As far as the internet is concerned. Not on any, and again, I went strictly sitcom. If you went to um, uh, shows like Lost and things, right. there were a lot of women on the okay. list. Okay, all right. Um, but I was going strictly old school sitcom. But okay. yes, that's they were all men, now that you mentioned yeah. it. Yes, they were. All right. And Topanga was not on a single list and i found that to be pretty interesting frankly you know who you might have to add to that list just doing this is kirstie alley on cheers kirstie was ah. another one yep yeah there's a one we're just looking to find a woman yeah. yes and it's see true. and she wasn't listed on any of those she was lists. not woody harrelson was for the same show on cheers there but kirstie alley was not very uh, interestingly enough so there you go david yep. what was it like directing bill daniels because we all remember you know first of all as kids he was very intimidating he was the consummate professional. I remember him being nervous that he was going to forget his lines and, and him just pouring over his script. And like you said, it was probably very confusing to him to in the middle of a, of a middle of a scene for Michael to come out and take a pencil and cross out the entire page and then rewrite new lines for everybody. When he was such a pro, he didn't want to forget any lines. So what was you, what was that relationship like directing Bill Daniels? Well, because I came from the theater I had a, and Bill came from the theater. There was a sort of distant foundation. Yeah. Uh, you know, the thing that's great about Bill is he's in Boy Meets World. He's in The Graduate. He's on Broadway. He's in, he's in everything. He's always the same fine actor. Yep. He doesn't change the way he does what he does for the medium. He does right. what he does, and the medium embraces it. Has to accommodate it. <laughs> yeah, makes it. He, he, so, so I think what Bill was, I hope I was trying to do with Bill, but I think Bill was as a monumentally gifted guy. I think he was doing for himself. He was figuring out how to be Bill Daniels in, in this uh, on different uh environment and and obviously he got it very quickly and you you know you can see it and when we watch this episode of Romans so like in the classroom scenes where he, the sort of dry undercover yeah. I mean that's perfect classic bill and I don't mean it's like rote I mean he's just being true to how he acts so that's what I think he was doing and I hope I was trying to help with that but I don't know I don't, I don't know well you were wonderful at that with all of us. All of us. So. But Bill also made all of us. You know, they say that, the, you know, the great sports, you know, having a great player on your team makes everybody else better. Oh, and yes. that's just how it was. When you had him as the anchor, you just talk about, I mean, we talked in the last episode about kind of in not necessarily a healthy way trying to get Michael's um, approval, approval and admiration. It was a different feeling with Bill. You wanted that approval and admiration because you knew you earned it with him. And it was something so special when he would, he would occasionally throw out a compliment as an actor or something like that. So there was that, it, it was an interesting balance between the healthy and the unhealthy ways of, of but getting also that what Bill's looking to, I, I think what Bill's looking to do with you and what can be very rewarding for you guys is good actors feed off and reinforce and enhance each other. Mm -hmm. they pay, good actors pay attention. Good actors respond to what the, is in front of them. They're, they're looking you in the eye and listening to your voice and responding to that. And Bill's the highest level actor. And so for you guys as, as, as newcomers to be in that situation, you can only get better at leaps and bounds. And when Bill would see that and have that relationship with you, I'm sure... He was as gratified as you were. Yeah. Well, let's let's just jump into the first scene then, because yeah, that cause that that's... really was a huge leap forward for me, um, and precisely because of what you're talking about, getting to do this presentation beat was the first time I remember doing something really kind of funny on Boy Meets World, because up until then I was always just the sort of one liners you know, off to the side in the cafeteria. And I remember having so much fun with this uh, because I, you know, I, I hadn't really done comedy before, but I, and what you, what you're saying, like the dynamic with Bill just sort of slipping in this dry, like, Oh, da, 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 Mr. Matthews was so, and then I remember getting permission to be 
stupid <laughs> getting up there yeah. and like i remember i i don't know whose idea was to, but i remember like the pointers yeah and I, I i believe it was you david said like no 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 writer it doesn't matter where you point that's yeah. funny and that's where we found that joke i remember finding the joke because we were like well, we have to hit the he's like no, no no don't even look just do it and i remember we did it and then bill's reaching out and adjusting us and just loving it it was so much and, and I, it was like the first time coming alive as an actor and getting laughs and being like oh you mean because i think in my kid brain i was like well i have to bring out the pointer and then i have to find where denver is because yeah. that's what my character is saying and i remember you being like no 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 <laughs> don't even look Look at it. Just smack the thing. And that just became the whole bit. Well, let me let me give the synopsis of the episode and then we will go into the the first um, the first scene. So the synopsis is that Sean and Corey get split up from doing a project together, making Sean work with Minkus and Corey work with Topanga. Corey overhears girls making fun of his hair and he decides to change it. So uh, this is Corey's Alternative Friends. It originally aired October 15th, 1993. Jeez. Uh, and David Trainer, who's joining us, is the director. The writers were Michael Jacobs, April Kelly and Patricia Forrester. I don't remember Patricia Forrester. I don't either. Forrester. I think this may be the only episode she did, okay. but I will fact check that myself. Okay. So we're in the very first scene, the cold open. Uh, as writer was mentioning, um, there are projects going on and Marla Sokoloff and uh, Megan Parler are the two girls fish at girl. the front. Yeah, we're going to, we've referred to her as fish girl. Um, <laughs> they get up, they do their presentation and then we see uh, Sean and Corey get up to deliver their presentation and... Corey is wearing a hooded vest. <laughs> As I, is Sean, I believe. Aren't they both home. with hoods? They both have hoods, but I, I think... Well, I think Sean had the... Sean had sleeves. Yeah, sleeves he had and the a hood. sleeves and, of course, the uh, impeccable dinosaur shirt. Yes. With, with Ryder hood. was big into dinosaur shirts. And this episode is what I like to start, uh, and we'll get into it as we get farther, but uh, the, the purple phase mm. of Boy Meets World, where for some reason all or most of us were wearing purple during most of the episode. Yeah. Go figure. So uh, we will get into that as well. The 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 hooded hooded sweatshirts. Here we go. So, writer, I remember the pointers yeah. ab as well as you do. I remember, yes. you know, because I was just sitting in that scene in the front row. I remember you guys having so much fun and thinking so it was fun. so <laughs> funny to yes. see kids with pointers and yep. the way Bill is adjusting and the way Bill is reacting yeah. to you. And the fact it was that prop humor, it was just basic prop humor. But I don't think we had done that yet on the show. You know, or I hadn't, you know, and so the ability to just like keep finding laughs and that's mostly what i remember about this episode i think is when i finally learned what a sitcom was like you know while doing it uh and we'll talk about later like being able to find multiple laughs in one beat uh you know or 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 to stretch something into separate beats like and i remember ben and i being so happy to be able to do the pointers at the same time like mm -hmm. choreography you know like that was just an educational moment it was like oh this is what comedy is you get give kids props and let them have fun you know and then you set them up against somebody like Bill Daniels, and it's just hysterical. Well, I loved the proximity of Bill to you guys too. The mm -hmm. way he's like right in between you, um, mm -hmm. David. Do you do you approach directing kids in comedy differently than you approach adults in comedy? I don't think so. I mean, I, I would say the there's a kind of schoolyard energy that is both valuable and has to be contained, channeled. <laughs> But you guys were great. I mean, my recollection was everybody came to play. I play in the finest sense of work, you know, came to, came to figure out how to do this stuff. And, and that, you know, rehearsal is the most fun of all, in my opinion. You, you have to perform it and do it, all that stuff, because you have to put it on tape or film and show it to the public. But the real fun is the Yes. Yes, yeah, completely agree. 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 And everybody can relax and do it and do it. There's no right or wrong. That's why the whole Michael Jacobs stuff that we were talking about for is so antithetical to what really, because it's like, go nuts. Yeah. yeah. Do, it wrong. do it wrong. Do it standing on your head. Do it, you know, <laughs> right. tell me. Oh, you think you'd be funny on your head? Try it. What the yeah. hell? It's no, nobody cares. And as a result, you end up with stuff that's exponentially better than if you, so that's what you want. And kids are particularly gifted kids, which you all were. What fun it kind of comes naturally, right? Because it's very similar to just playing make believe. I mean, that's what kids do. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. You, 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 
Was this writer, was this one of those times that you would often talk about where you were given a prop and you and Ben maybe played a little too much with the prop and Bill would, after a while, be like, all right, enough with whatever oh, you're yeah. playing with. Oh, yeah. I, probably not at this point, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, at this point, I think we were still, you know, we were just discovering what it was we were doing. Uh, I would say by second season is when we would get in trouble with Bill. Or <laughs> second season is when Ben and I would be playing with something for too long or just have an inside joke that we thought was hysterical that nobody else found funny uh <laughs> and we would repeat it ad nauseum that was that was big with me and ben um but no i don't think at this point at this point we were just i, I just remember being so uh happy to discover comedy you know like yeah. the, I, I i didn't know what com- i hadn't done it and like this was it like this was me watching this episode was like and it was remembering oh this is where i learned what a sitcom is because i didn't watch but it in this writer one of the things you're saying is you didn't go into it thinking it was fun Exactly. You went into it as a task to perform. I have to get out of my chair, stand up front with Ben, and give our, give our talk. Right? That's, right. The, that's it. Oh, and then coincidentally, it's fun. Yeah. Right? yeah. So there's a kind, it's, not, it's when you know it's fun. That's when you start to do it four times and repeat it. And try, right. That's good. <laughs> it starts getting stale real quick. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You don't know it's funny. That's fun. Yeah. The discovery. <laughs> And so in this scene is is mm-hmm. Topanga's reveal. And you mm-hmm. see my hair before you see uh, any other aspect of me. And it brought back immediate memories. And I called my mother because my mother is responsible for that Topanga hair. The crimp? crimp. Would it be it, a crimp? Is it that what it is? It, it wasn't was crimped. crimped hair. It wasn't it was braided crimped. though, right? My, I came home on Tuesday night, ate dinner with my family. So Tuesday, you know, after producer or network run through, washed my hair. And then my and then kind of dried it enough that it was still damp. And then my mom braided my hair in no joke, probably about a hundred braids. Oh. I'm I'm talking a minuscule amount of hair, oh. very tiny braids, rubber bands all at the bottom. It would take us until about eleven p.m. And then oh. I would go to sleep and sleep with the braids, and then wake up that day, wear the braids to work, have them all taken out in the hair and makeup room, and we did that for the entirety of the first season. Wow! My, that how is did how, she know? How did you know that this? Had you done that to your hair before? Well, uh, yes, or? we we had known just from having long hair that if you braid your hair while it's damp, it creates waves. And I don't remember the specific conversation of like, oh, we want Topanga's hair yeah. to be crimped, but that was a conversation yeah. that was ha- that happened with my mom present, and my mom said, oh, I could braid it. And then eventually Ugh. at the end of the first season, my mom was like, for one thing, Danielle is up until 11 o'clock on, and we had to do it back to back nights, Tuesday night for Wednesday pre-tape. And uh. then Wednesday night, we had to redo it because by that time, then it didn't look as good for Thursday. So we had to redo it Wednesday night Ugh. for Thursday's taping. And my mom was like, one, I'm not getting paid. Two, Danielle is up <laughs> until 11 o'clock. We have to come up with a different system for hair. And yeah. that's when we started doing the curlers. But also uh, like what okay. it didn't. It didn't look like, I mean, nobody's hair naturally looks like that. No. Like no. the only way you get hair like that is to spend an a hour of time. doing yeah. it. Yeah. Six so hours. So it's so interesting that she's supposed to be this like hippie earthy, but she actually has hair that's been done like basically <laughs> at a salon level for hours. <laughs> like, it doesn't make any sense. No. But I guess it was just a unique enough look that it made you go like, oh, this person's different. Yeah. It fit the aesthetic more than yeah. it made any logical it did. sense. It was, oh, it was so good. But yeah, so that starts our that's my, great my reveal, though. hair just, there's journey. Topanga. There's Topanga. And I remember this scene in particular, the let me see if you're vibrating vibrationally acceptable that uh-huh. is being one of the lines i had to do a million times to say it slow enough really just Vibration. turning slowly <laughs> let me see if our, i it was so hard it was just oh, so i imagine also in your head because you've got the the lights on you there's a crowd waiting for you in your head you're probably like this is taking forever Ever. Oh yeah. Like, oh yeah. Why, that, why, I, am, why I am I talking so, so like I, slowly? It did. It felt like I was speaking. <laughs> like that's how it felt to me. I was like, "There's no way you want me to do it slower." But you have to say, with your hair, with what you're wearing, and with the kind of serene look you have on your face, and with with Ben just saying, Corey just saying, "What Topanga?" You kind of get most of the character r- instantly. Yeah, you know yeah. right like, away. Like you know exactly what it's like. You don't. You're not going to get the layers, but you get what they're going with right away. With with like, oh, it's a little hippie flower child. Like you get it right away. It's yes. Awesome. Yes. All right. Great so reveal. Are we are we good to move on to the next scene where yeah. we're in the yeah. cafeteria? Yeah. So 
so we're in the cafeteria and this is where Corey overhears uh, Fish Girl and Marla Sokoloff talking about uh, Brillo Head. They call him Brillo Head. Corey assumes it is about him and he then questions his hair. Well, he asks Ryder, Sean, what do you think mm-hmm. about my hair? Mm. I thought you, and I by say the he's way, more of a Nerf head. Yes, <laughs> yes. more of a Nerf head. Uh, props yeah. to Ryder Strong for doing something that lots of actors do not like to do and voraciously oh, eating God. during the scene. I, I just wanted to go back and tell myself, stop eating. Most of us just, just, just push the food around with a fork so we don't have to eat during lines. <laughs> Every time you see Ryder, you know, you're you're like, Russ, Russ told me once, you know, again, another guy, Russ, Russ told me when he was an off Broadway actor, he always figured out how to eat in a scene in the play he was in. So he was sure he would have dinner. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, I really remember Rusty saying, no, no. I always figure out how to eat. Yeah. Before. So that's how <laughs> you have Ryder. There's he Ryder. He gets fed every night. That's yep. amazing. Ben at one point picks up one piece of ravioli and takes the tiniest little bite out of the corner <laughs> by the time Ryder is three quarters of the way through his plate. It was so, I was just, I was literally so pointing crazy. it out. It's like, look, he's still going. You just kept shoveling it in. God bless you, Ryder. Can I, can I, I'm going to do a weird tangent right now because the, uh, Marla Sokoloff was actually present. This is, th- th- this kind of connects in a weird way. So, you know, people ask me where my hairstyle came from, where, you know, wh- how I be- got this sort of, because actually what people don't realize, I had to straighten my hair. My hair is wavier, was wavier. So I would actually be spending hours in the chair with them straightening my hair Ugh. to get it to look that, you know, the, the classic Sean hair. But Marla was there the night... I- so I knew Marla. She was a part of a group of kids that lived at the Oakwoods because we were all yep. kid actors. We all and lived come there. down for pilot season. And the pilot season that I got Boy Meets World, I went and had a gathering where I was the only boy with Larissa Olanik, Marla Sokoloff. And I can't remember who else. there was like two other girls there. And they decided to take over my hair and they wet my hair and parted it down the middle and told me that I should be wearing it like this because, and I think it was because it looked like Christian Slater, who oh. was like an actor at the time, okay. a slightly sure. older actor that we all look. And so I started wearing my hair like that, which is why I was wearing my hair that way when I went to the Boy Meets World pilot audition. Wow. So in a weird way, full circle, Marla Sokoloff being in this episode uh, connects to my the creation of my character's iconic hair too. Wow. And yeah, one of, one of the first episodes, uh, first of many that had something to do with hair. Yes, we a lot, had of, a lot so of hair, hair. episodes. A lot of um, hair episodes. And I want to point out something here, which is Michael Jacobs has tightly curly hair. Yes, yeah, he like has Ben's hair. Yeah, he has Ben's hair. So again, this is talking about Ben being a voice for, from a representative. Of Michael. Physically, he's a representative of Michael too, and all yeah. that anxiety about the hair. I don't care whose name is on the script. Yeah. There's only one person who wrote it. <laughs> yes, you're 100% yeah, that's, right. That's true. By the way, Marla Sokoloff went on. We talk about a lot about how we were kind of, you know, against each other for the role of Topanga and that I got it. Marla Sokoloff has gone on to have an absolutely incredible career. Stellar. She is yes. so incredibly talented. She's now directing, but she was in, uh, she was on Full House. She was in Fuller House. She was in Whatever It Takes. She was on The Practice. The practice. She yeah. is truly an incredible actress. So. And really cool, by the way. And a very cool yes, person. Very cool person. Yes. So um, just giving her her dues because she is absolutely, uh, absolutely we had a lot incredible. This, and, and I think every week we will be doing that. We had so many guest stars on our show that went off to do unbelievable things. Uh, that we didn't even realize how blessed we were to be working with a lot of these people. Absolutely. So every week, I'm sure we're going to be like, and remember this person and look what they did and remember this person and look what they did. So yeah. big shout out to I Marla. mean, in you guys, in the cafeteria, the, the weirdos yes. with Topanga, yes. yeah. keyboard... Chris Owen. Is Chris My Owen. My boy, Chris. Yep. Yes. The My boy, Terminator. Chris. Yeah. He says not yeah. a single word. Nope. And plays keyboard the entire time. And plays keyboard the entire we time. We both did a movie with Chris. You and I both did different movies with did Chris you know, Owen. Will, did you remember that he had done this episode when you worked with him? No. So we were, uh, he said to me, like, second day shooting, he was like, you know, I was on Boy Meets World. I was like, no, you weren't. It's like, dude, I know everybody that was on Boy Meets World. <laughs> yeah, I've had on. this experience so yeah, many times. Yeah, and he's yeah, like, no, so I, I was. I was. I, he's like, the first Topang episode. I was like, now I know you're wrong, because it's that's like the most important yeah. episode of the show. There's no way. 
And he's like, Amazing. no, I just sat there playing the keyboard the whole time. I was like, you were the keyboard kid? Are you kidding me? <laughs> and uh, yeah, so Chris went off and, and had another great career. I mean, it's just we we were one after another of these amazing actors all over the place. Yeah. yeah. Chris Owen. Just to make sure everyone heard me say it, he was the Shermanator in American Pie. He has, yeah. he yeah. is like just an yeah. absolutely famous actor. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Anyway, so in I didn't write it down, which was my fault. Do you see the Topanga and her weirdos in this cafeteria scene? Or is this just... I don't think so. Okay, I, think I don't think so either. I think this one is just me uh, offering to straighten his hair. And, and it's yeah, where and we that. hear about Stacy for the first Correct. time. Right. This is, and this is this is where the sort of... My experience of the show was... This was where the death chair finally came full circle. Yep. And because the original, up until, I believe, until Tuesday, I think... I think the the poor there was another kid who was playing a, a, the other best friend, and it was his sister who straightened her, her hair, and he ended up going with Corey to Corey's house and straightening his hair. And I was just like every other episode, stuck in the cafeteria or in the classroom, you know, with a couple of lines. And um, yeah, that kid got fired uh, the same week. So firing, this is again a lot of, a lot firing, of firing that firing. week. David, explain yeah. the death chair to David. I don't know if David knows that we call it the death yeah, chair. Yeah, I remember somebody okay. sat in a chair and they were gone. Yep, that's pretty much it. It's uncomplicated. Yeah, I think David um, helped named it the death chair. We we yeah. always talk about it. But I remember, I mean, and I, I think I've talked about this on an earlier episode of, of the podcast, but David, you might not remember, but the morning I showed up, um, having gotten the script that now Sean had a much bigger part and that everything had been cut you we were in this cafeteria scene with the cameras there so yeah it must have been wednesday morning it was it was it was after the tuesday run through um and uh i remember you pulled you pulled me out out of my seat and stood me in front of the hall uh crew and said can i just say it is uh, well deserved and about time that you had uh, your 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 due and you got this kind of part and it's going to be great and yeah, everybody applauded and I remember just like being so grateful and feeling like okay I can do this because I was terrified you know I was so nervous um, and you just made me feel so comfortable and welcome and deserving and it just you know like I said it changed my life this episode was the one where I was like oh I'm I'm a part of a sitcom and this is what I this is the job and it just you see, was you're amazing. getting at something too in the of the long life of the show this is the fourth episode right yeah the writers can only do so much at once so they start with the core thing which is Corey and and Phil Daniels right? yeah. and then they start to mess around with the pieces and figure out what's missing and what would how do we amplify this and you look around and find out what resources are right there and writer there you were right just the way Daniel there you were in a little bit part yeah. and, ju and and just the way will you said you know I came in and I realized how to say it. it's like actors flower in small opportunities and then the opportunities enlarge and the next thing you know that's the show right smart writers are paying attention to what's lurking on the edges yeah absolutely because yeah, yeah it, it was so funny that they, they kept trying to find this third character they're like man we really can't nail this friendship situation and then they were like yeah because we don't need yeah. the other person we have the friendship right here we have writer we have sean and let's lean into that and obviously that's a you know the sean Corey relationship is absolutely iconic wasn't the first character that the poor actor who was fired wasn't his sister originally named rochelle I will consult. With I Rochelle. will consult with, with Rochelle. Rochelle. That's right. That was okay. his line. That was his line. And oh, can I tell you the story? You, I, I think the, we have to tell is, that story. Are the, we? The, should the, we wait the, till the scene? <laughs> should we wait till we get this to the, is scene? the scene? This is the scene. Are we this here is now? Are we here yes, now? Okay. This is so the, the originally he oh, yeah. offered to talk to his sister to figure out how to uh, straighten her hair or how she straightens her hair, and Corey says to him. Well, will you ask her? Can you can you can you find out? And the kid was supposed to sit back and be really cool, like he was maybe gonna help Corey. And he just and the line was, "I will consult with Rochelle." And before the run through, what well, was a big laugh the first time? Remember at the table read, it was a big yeah, and at the table read, and right before the run through, Ben told the the guy that is so funny when you take like the longest beat ever before you say that line it's so funny you should just wait forever and the kid listened to ben and sure enough leaned back in his chair took a deep breath and just 
nobody laughed. Yeah, he, it, it just he took he took like thirty <laughs> seconds and then said, oh "I will consult with Rochelle," and not a single laugh. And, and we he moved was on gone. to the next. Scene. And he was gone. <laughs> and he was gone. The and I know gone. Ben and the whole rest of the week. Ben and I were like, "Oh my god, we got that guy fired!" Because it was the two of us being like, "That's so funny." Yeah. That's the, but yeah, Ben. I remember Ben always being like, well, "What did I do? I told him to take a huge beat." Oh my gosh! Uh, yeah, I will. Well, this goes back to what we said before. If you think it's funny. It's death. Exactly. It's death. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh. Oh my. Okay, so we, we're out of the cafeteria. We're back at home. Uh, Lily has her classic doll throwing moment. Her yep. dolly is cold. Uh, she puts it in the toaster oven. The, Great joke, by the way. Great joke. So the, the, the what head would, no, on that the would melted be, No, body. I mean, the, that would be a mistake. And then tapping her dead. Mommy, I, I made, made a mistake. A mistake. That, that, was, that was a funny joke. This is now the dance. The, the dance. dance. There were so many iconic moments in this episode. I mean, one after another of stuff that people talk about when they think of Boy Meets World. There yeah. were like four of them just in this episode. Yeah, there's yeah. a couple of them just in the scene. Use a mirror, babe. Use a is... mirror, babe. The dance. Yeah, uh, and I remember the dance. I hadn't remembered it until I was watching again. But I remember that when when it came time for Topanga to do the interpretive dance, I remember saying to David, so what do you want me to do? And he said, come up with it. What feel? What What feels good to you? What do you want to do? And being like, wow. huh, okay. Again, that was one of the things that David did so beautifully is put things in our hands. This yep. is your character. What would she do? Think about it. Put it together. I'm here. I'm here to help you if you need help. And I, I was one of those things that then Jennifer Fischel, the unsung hero of Topanga Lawrence, uh, my mom and I choreographed that dance. I remember my That's mom. So cool. I remember <laughs> saying like, you know, the humpback whale part being like, OK, well, now what am I going to do? And she said, what if you you know, what if you do this? And it's like a humpback whale. And, and then the, immediately the crowning achievement. That moment perfect. is the best. It's and then it's when, so you know, so pale, oh, you know, look to the sun. Like, I remember doing that with my mom and coming up with what we came up with and presenting it to David and David being like, yeah, yeah, that's great. It's great. I love it. That's what, that's <laughs> what we're going to do. The important thing is you own it. Yes, yeah. exactly. And, and that, so one of the things is that that moment holds because it's coming out of you. It's not imposed. On you. Yeah. Right. If it, if it, if it, and it's, it's a wonderful moment, but you own it. Yeah, and I felt comfortable doing it because I, I, my yours. mom and I created it. Yeah, yeah it I felt yours. I felt yeah. comfortable doing it. I knew what I needed to do. The only thing that, of course, is hard is I was holding the lipstick in my hand, and I was supposed to be making a round donut, and so I'm holding the liquid in my thumb, and so the the circle isn't a complete circle. Um, and then I have to take the lid off, and I'm now I'm holding a lid in one hand and the lipstick in the other, and I think I was supposed to draw a peace sign on my face it was something which makes was, sense which yeah. makes sense but i think it ended up being a plus sign yes. it was a circle with a plus sign in on on my face um and i don't think we had to do it a bunch of times i think we pretty much i mean i know we did it more than once but i i don't remember having to like we did it in front the of the audience yeah. i remember because i remember this was like my first moment discovering that there would be two laughs for the price of one because i would walk in and get a laugh on the look Yep. And then get a laugh on Use a Mirror, Babe. And I remember discovering that on tape night and being like, oh, oh, they're laughing at just the way I stop and look, that that's a, a whole separate beat, you know, just learning how to act. Just let me point out something there too, right? That meant you were listening to that unrehearsed cast member, the audience. Right. Exactly. And that's the key to doing this. That's yes. where it goes back to the theater. Yeah. It, it goes to vaudeville. Yeah. You got to both do it and be ready to jump and also listen and be ready to wait. Yep. Yes. It's. I mean, they were. That was the first time we we had an interactive audience too. I mean, we had. They were really engaged and giving with us, us that night and giving us instantaneous feedback. And that was the first time we'd ever really experienced that. It was. Was that because the show was already airing? Or what? What? what I don't made this think different? it was out yet. We I just got lucky. Know. We just had the best two hundred people we could have possibly. Yeah. yeah. I remember. I, one of the things I remember about that is you know we always would do intros. And our intros were always a ton of fun for us. We would do what we've talked about this. We'd do our, our yell and then we'd run out. And that was the first time that it was mostly girls. And I remember that you yeah. and I, Ryder, both got like the woos for the first time ever. Woo. And it was like, yeah. oh, what's going on? Yeah. It made something. You guys it was are just totally be, different. Yeah, it was a totally different You guys different are going to be heartthrobs. Um, so Ugh. it was very strange. Very I strange. would bet that there's an element, too, of four episodes in. You kind of got your feet down and were more relaxed. Yep. Definitely. But as it, if you if you are nervous, even hidden nervous, the audience can feel it. If you're sort of cool, 
yeah then the audience can relax and respond naturally and then it gets much more yeah. Response. It was great. I remember actually, I remember. So Mitchell bank was our warm up guy and, yeah. um, the girls were wooing. So Mitchell brought me out in front of the audience and had me like run back and forth in front of them as they were wooing. <laughs> and he well, came to Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So <laughs> he actually, your shirt off, kid. he came and apologized. That's what I remember is he came and apologized really? where he was like, uh, the next, week he was like you know i shouldn't have done that and it was michael who told me he's like no i told mitchell that don't ever do that to you again and it was and again i'm ignorant to all this stuff i was like oh important person tells me to run in front of audience that's what i do <laughs> so uh, so, yeah I mean, he was to us though they were adults you know and everybody was an adult everyone right? was an adult so it was it but he came and apologized sorry i shouldn't have done that and and michael was like you're never doing that again i was like all, so all then right. he did it to bill daniels the following week right probably yes exactly <laughs> well bill was always the heartthrob of the show really if we were, <laughs> but it was it was it was that strange moment of realizing where it's like oh maybe i shouldn't just do what the adults automatically tell me to do all the time Hmm, you know, you have those moments where it's like, that's, you know, you're gotta, you gotta stand on your own a little bit at some point and you get those little moments of that was one of those moments. I probably shouldn't have done that. So it was, <laughs> it was weird. Yeah. It was very strange. So then we're up in the bedroom, Corey and Eric's bedroom. Yes. And, uh, we see the hair straightening, uh, disaster, disaster <laughs> on his hair. His head is burning. Uh, and writer, you call Stacy. Like you do. Call yep. your sister like Sean always did for seven years. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. This was the she only time was... that ever happened. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I was also bummed at like how quickly Sean just bails on the situation. I know. You know. Like they clearly hadn't developed. We hadn't, I had no relationship with the parents yet. I had no relationship with you yet. I, that really didn't happen until the end of this season. Probably until the Fugitive episode. I feel like when I blew up a mailbox is when Sean as tr sort of troublemaker was really solidified. But this is the beginning of that, right? Like Sean gets Corey into the situation. Um, so it's funny, but but I don't have any any real character beat. It's just, no, but I, they yeah. also haven't developed you at all yet because it was, no. was it this episode or last episode where you say like touch football, my house after, and it's yeah. like, okay, well, Sean didn't have a house and there was no backyard. Right. <laughs> so it's like, you could tell they didn't, right. you know, they they just weren't there yet. It was like, let's put this, let's put this in. All right, you're, you're friends. That's the way it's going to be. All right, you're going to play touch football at your house. It's like, well, we haven't developed that. Sean doesn't have a house or a sister. Yeah, I was bummed that you bailed, especially because you I really feel like for both Will and Ryder, I felt like this is the episode where I feel like you guys did really have your characters like Ryder was you were very funny in this. You're always Ryder yeah. to me, the star of like you are so freaking good. I agree. Every week I'm always like, damn, he was good. Uh, really good. I, way I better actor than most way. of us. But I know, were, but like, you were. I don't know what I'm doing. But, but you, you were. were like not in control of my body or my voice. I'm just like all over the place. It was great. <laughs> oh, no. and, it was and great. And you oh, definitely every week you've been giving yourself crap saying like, oh, I'm right. not good. I'm whatever. Oh, you. This moment when Will comes in, does the ball, does a cue ball. Yes. <laughs> that was and funny. Then, like, it was great, yeah. dude. It I was, was getting, really, I was slowly getting more relaxed. comfortable, but it was still, I still get moments in my head as an actor where I'm looking at it going like, oh, and I'm sitting on the desk because David said, now go sit on desk. <laughs> you know, like right. it was one of those things where I just was very, I wasn't doing anything naturally. And you I was were very, just very presentational robotic. Still. Yes. Yeah. You were very presentational, but I feel like this very. felt like, like you were owning the presentation. I was more, getting you know? there a little more, but it was, yeah. I mean, I wasn't looking down to find my mark, but it was pretty damn right. close still. <laughs> So it was, I just wasn't comfortable in my own skin as an actor at all. So it was, and it, I'd love to blame the writing be like, well, they hadn't found me as a character. You know, I just no. wasn't comfortable. I was No, none still, of us were. I mean, how could we be? <laughs> but see, that's the thing. That's what Danielle was talking about. You came off as very comfortable. Yeah, you pretended. You came well. off really like you had the character, even though you didn't know what the character was yet, you were very natural at... I Doing I think what I was you a were very doing, clueless young actor. But it <laughs> you works. Then. It I was came great. from theater. I had never watched television, so I didn't know what we were doing. So I was probably more present in some ways. Like I was more of a less self conscious in a good way, you know. But I, it's not like I knew what I was doing, and and or, you know, was super relaxed because I was. Con I was just there. I was just in the sort of ever present state uh so yeah but I, I i all i see is like a mess when i look at me i'm like oh god david do you have any thoughts or feelings looking back at like your old directing work when you watch this episode now i look at you guys and, and i love what you do and and i admire and 
I'm grateful to be part of it. That, and I know that sounds a little like, wait a minute, but it's about the actors. It's about the actors and the words. So when you guys are good and funny, I think, yeah, they're good. Oh. <laughs> and I take great pleasure in that. Like an audience member. I really did, like, I know we're only the par- partial way through it, but I really did love this episode. I did too. I did too. It was really, it's so, I don't know, it's so, it's so cute. It's also very well built. And again, to credit where it's due, even a 22 minute story has to have a structure. And every one of the scenes advances this. And I want to go back to Lily, or if that's her name, the little the child. Yeah, Lily. That has no part of the story. It yeah. doesn't have any connection to anything else. Everything else builds. Whether there's a project, there's hair, the hair leads to Tokyo. It, it's all very- I did notice, I did notice she says, I don't care what my doll looks like. I and still I was like, love oh, maybe her. I still love her. I was like, oh, maybe that's a, a thematic link. Yeah, it is. I'm sure somebody said, we got to make this or something. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but it's a very well built yeah. little story. Yeah, that's something Ryder mentioned early on, too, is that every moment so far in the scripts, we're like, yeah, that comes back later. Yeah, that yeah. builds on it. it, it Everything builds. Yeah. All right, can we talk about the end of this scene? Yes. This is one of those classic moments that <clears throat> I think this might have been the origin of us saying optical flip. Do you guys remember how <laughs> oh, we always yes. do that? Of course, we'd always do of that in the middle of rehearsal. Okay, so this is you know, when Ben is like... Now, well, there's one thing I'm not going to school tomorrow. School, Corey, no. And then in the script, it would say optical, optical flip. flip. <laughs> and then you turn the page. And what that meant is that they would, in the editing, flip the, the, the screen. It's such like a 90s, 80s, like editing technique to flip the screen to then reveal of course Corey sitting in school but then we this became our in joke is that we knew we were like our <laughs> service for the end of the scene was to tee up the, the optical flip yep. and that's all we do so then it just became our running joke for seven years we'd say something to one another and we'd be like optical, optical flip. flip yeah but there's yeah. no way i'm going to that party optical, optical flip, flip. <laughs> It's true. Yeah. The second I saw that, that memory just came right back into my brain. But yeah, we'd say it about everything in our personal lives. Not just when we were rehearsing. Yeah. We'd be, 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 one of us would be telling a story and we'd just be like, optical, optical flip. flip. Yeah. <laughs> I remember it so well. Oh, my. Um, the only thing so that we go to the classroom after that optical flip. Yeah. It's, that struck me as odd is that he's wearing the hat and we're acting as though the hat is completely covering the fact that his <laughs> hair is the, His hair is all the way down. I did. I was watching it last night with my wife and she said that she's like does nobody notice that the rest of his hair doesn't look normal it's like has nobody no, nobody picked up on that it's like i guess not babe yeah well i guess the two the two moments like um the the scream that happens in that episode where you know we we pull out to reveal Corey screaming in the room and then we see the outside of the house and then we reveal All you right. know that's like the first real moment of the show that's like clearly not taking place in reality it's like the yeah, first right. time it's very meta yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah out of nowhere that's kind of the first time and then you know in the next scene with him with the with the wig um the and wig was the wig's actually pretty funny it is the wig with the duck bill on the front I and do then the, remember the, mat the of the hair on the side about the taking off the hat and whether or not the hair would drop to it, create the duck bill yes. i remember the stress of like that needing to go right and it yep. not really ever fully fully falling the way we needed it to and ben to his credit you can tell is doing his best to play it towards the lens like where he's uh-huh. like trying to turn his show head try to turn show the angle so you can see that there's a big duck bill in the front so even he was more aware as an actor at that point of okay well if i turn this way then at least i can show what the whole joke is supposed to be right um i hadn't found that yet but yeah. he, he clearly had which is which at 12 again carrying the show and let's point out again we've said this in every episode now so far but He's been in every single scene, essentially, every for scene. four episodes. This kid, who's 12, yeah. has been carrying four straight episodes. It's amazing. But one of the things I remember, because, I, you know, I my workstation would be a, a, a podium, right, where I had a script and had stuff on the podium like this. And the script opened, and I remember Ben would come over. He could barely see up to where the script is before a scene. Look at it. Got it. Right? He's like, his brain was yeah. like a vacuum. Oh, he remembered yeah. every particle that went into it. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. The, the skill level of, I mean, obviously he studied his lines before, but he would just like look, got it, and do it. Yeah. Yep. So the skill set was long. Yeah, I remember him being off book, which is what you call it. You know, you, you hold your script for the first couple of days because you don't know the lines yet. Uh, he was always off book 
uh, faster than the rest of us was. Uh, rest of us were, excuse me, uh, <laughs> yeah. English. Um, but he he was. He would he would. We'd all. It's memorizing lines, especially when you have the the regularity of a sitcom, is muscle memory, and you really can you you lose it after a while. If you if you're not memorizing lines every day, you go back 15 years later, and it's tough to memorize your lines again. Yep. Um, so you, it is a muscle memory you use. But he just had it. Very quickly. I mean, to the point where, just like David was saying, he would, because Michael would run in in the middle of scenes, in the middle of, when we talk about changing the, like, oh, Bill has to deal with the changes or we had to deal with the changes. These would happen instantaneously on the set in front of the audience. Sometimes an entire page, like the full page, cross it out. Now this person's going to say this, this person's going to say this and everything's different. And now yeah. I'm re- I'm learning cue lines differently. I'm figuring out what I'm going to say. I have to figure out how I want to say it. And the audience is sitting there waiting for waiting. you to do it. And Ben so would it's... just instantly pick it up. Like, all right, let's go. And we were like, oh, uh, okay, I guess we're doing this. Yeah. So yeah, I he had that, that right away. I remember I did too. loving yeah. that experience. Because there's that energy of yeah. we don't even know it. You know, it's so yeah. fresh at that point. But yeah, yeah, Ben was Ben. We keep talking about how good Ben was, but he was he was good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and to David's point too, that's uh, you don't know if anything's funny yet. So you, yeah. it, it's great because you'll get a real natural reaction based on you know we we don't have any feedback. Nobody's had a chance to tell us. Oh my god, that's so funny! Yeah. And then we find a way to play it up. It's, and it's fresh for the audience too. They they might have seen it three times already. So now they've got a new scene automatically. They don't expect it either, and it's a whole new energy coming from there. Yeah. So well, I want to add something into this too, because as you talk, it's like how completely untemperamental it was. There was never any bridle or it, you went with it, you know? And that's a remarkable thing of a company of actors who, who, because I've been in other situations where lines change in the middle of things or where things are getting, and actors push back. Yeah, actors can get put on it and, and or push back or be just naturally have a temperamental response to things that's not right. always the easiest thing to do. And I get it, right? It's not like I'm going, what the heck is going on? You guys were so sort of like, take it, roll with it, figure out how to do it, do the loans, do it. Really remarkable. And because a, a show with young people like you has time constraints. Yeah. That's All right. Awesome. Yeah. You don't. If you say, I can't do this, or I got to go to my dressing room, or I got to yeah. any of the other things, we never get done. Mm-mm. Right? So, we, and among all the other things you deserve credit for is having your feet on. We had so, I mean, I, I like writer remember those moments and thinking it was just fun and just being yeah. like, what, what new lines. Okay. What are they? What yeah. are, what, what are we doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the mm-hmm. attitude. That's the way you got to do it. Yeah. And I think Bill Daniels had to learn that. I think he's a, smart guy and learned it fast but but he in the beginning i think he thought what are you what are we doing I, nichols didn't do this to me yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> was exactly and and, and 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 then he thought and then i think he got it and I thought, oh, yeah it'll be fun i can do this where i don't think they walked on to him 1776 halfway through and said we're going to change the john adams no, no, song we saw him bill <laughs> <laughs> So at the end of the scene in the classroom, Corey takes off his hat. Everybody sees the hair. Everybody laughs at him. And he looks at Topanga and he says, you know, go ahead and laugh. And she says, you know, your hair looks different. Why would I laugh at you? And he gives her that look for the first time like, huh. Oh, why are you why are you like this? Yeah. And he wants to know a little bit more, I think. Which is odd because later in the series we find out you've actually been in love since you were five. Exactly, and then another you were continuity in love in thing of the nineties. And then you were in love. Yeah, it gets mentioned that we <laughs> met. Revisionist history. Exactly, it gets of course mentioned that Corey and Topanga have been together since they were three. Yep. Which we, you know, we've we know seen the origin. We know that isn't and, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but so then we go into the cafeteria and this is now where I, I, I basically stopped writing notes at this point because I was now just like sucked in. And I loved this cafeteria scene where we see the cast of characters that Topanga hangs out with. One of my favorite lines in the series is what cape when he says, listen, that is so so funny. funny. So laugh out loud, funny line that cool I joke. was not expecting it. And I guffawed. It, yes. was, it yeah. was amazing. I, it was great. Yeah. I have was, a question for you. You've, you know, you've worn this cape <laughs> since you were little and he just stands up. And he says, what, what cape? cape? I, I, it's <laughs> it so great. funny to me. It was great. Uh, mm-hmm. And Marty York is the friend in this. So he's the third friend. He's not sitting in the death chair. 
But yeah. he's he is the death chair that week. And is. Sean is so mean. Sean is so There was mean. a lot of people that, I mean, if you look back at that, there were times where, and I get why it had to be very direct, but there was times where Corey came off as mean. No, I mean, no. there is there's there are a couple characters where it's like, but that's there's something very real about that. I mean, that's kind of how kids, kids are. are. Yeah. And it's, yeah, but I don't think it works the same way in today's world. Though, no, luckily. I don't think so. I think either. that there's a there, there's an overall insider outsider. What is normal? What is not uh, atmosphere that this episode sure surely encourages if not exploits uh, and obviously you know it it makes a, a bridge between to Corey and topanga via that but there's a mean spiritedness there you know in in general to like what is normal and what is average or what is what, what most boys do and you know i it's funny because i feel like that is ex- incredibly dated and a good it, 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 it is. is great it is don't you think it's redeemed like yes no, I, of course it, yeah yeah no definitely redeemed by the fact that Corey as the representative of the spirit of the show comes to see that he was wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's it. I tell you, there's one line where it's not in the scene. So maybe we'll say to get there, but there's only one line where I go, Oh, Oh, and that is, you're going to be one of those girls who doesn't shave her legs. Right. <laughs> yeah. That, that's one where you think, now you could just take that out. Yeah, and, you know, that scene we yeah, that's the scene where I do the dance. That's another one. That's right. That's use a mirror, babe scene. Yep. And you're going to be one of those girls who doesn't shave. And I loved the reaction. And I actually loved my the reading. It was a great on line it. read. I haven't decided. I haven't yet. decided yet. Yeah, yeah. And it's, a, it's, it's a little offended yep. that hey, I. And I'll, yep. I'll, I'll figure that out I'll when figure I figure it that out. out. When it it's nothing yeah. to do with you. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and your response saves it. Your yeah. response makes it. Okay. okay, passable. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, this is where we see Chris Owen playing the keyboard. Never speaks. Never speaks. Never stops playing the keyboard. Not one I time know. during every, the scenes. Every actor there, Lee Norris, um, I don't know the actress's name. And she, I think, went She's, on to do other stuff, too. I, I like recognized her, her and I couldn't, up. yeah, I, I couldn't remember what her name was either, unfortunately. But everybody is so great at that table. And so Sean is laughing at Corey. Corey gets up and he goes to join them and realizes he's one of them now. And uh, the potential Petition, again, to save to save the librarian comes up and he then, you know, says why they're not going to have any success. Um, I mean, that's anybody else want to talk about anything else in that scene? No, or I mean, on? again, we, we, we hit I on was a, jarred by the Beavis and Butthead reference. That, that was damn. one like a weird, Beavis and Butthead. But it's a good one because even though it's dated I and mean, obviously it's just the name is funny, you know, like they don't want that. They want Beavis. They watch Beavis and Butthead. And, and then but then our audience cheered. Which yes. I, I doubt we expected, actually. Well, no, you see Ben kind of. What, is it Lee who played Minkus? Is yeah, that, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. When he said, I like anything with Angela Lansbury. Oh. <laughs> That, that's really funny. It's so funny. And you don't, somehow it's still really funny. Yes, <laughs> it is. And it's also, it's it's one of those things where the writers would often put in jokes that meant one thing to kids and something else to adults. I mean, it, it, how often you have a, a 11 or 12 year old kid throwing out an Angela Lansbury reference. I know. And it mm-hmm. works. And it still works to and David's point. To somehow works. 29 years later, yes, it's still it's really still funny. It's funny to hear, to see Lee talking about Angela Lansbury. It's hysterical. Yeah. Every character in that little group is, is phenomenal. And I literally wrote down what cape. Yeah. It was, it's just so funny. And, and even Chris Owen without having a line playing the keyboard like it's all those characters were well defined yep and you you loved them and you you know doesn't that keyboard man have headphones he He does he does i mean he's not even says what's seen it's so great it's so great (laughs) oh man so great i love it so we go back to the house we're in Corey's bedroom Corey is now curling his hair trying to get it back to its original glory and eric walks in Yes, this is, uh, so I'm actually going to show Danielle something here on my phone. Uh, I found when I was home, all <gasps> the original Polaroids. What? You are, he has the Polaroids that he took. Sneak through <gasps> that. Show you him. kept them? I have That's amazing. the Polaroids. Oh my, oh gosh. my gosh. That I took of him. Um, in the actual scene. In the actual scene. So I have Polaroids and then Polaroids of them doing, doing the, curlers. the curl. And then Polaroids of... Ryder. The original kid that was with you, Ryder. No way. So, I will consult oh with Rochelle. God. I will consult with Rochelle. So I have all, I literally oh my kept gosh. the oh my Polaroids. I, 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 must have, yes. I must have 15 of them from all the different takes we did. It's just walking in, 
taking a taking a, a Polaroid and walking out was the whole scene. And I was cleaning out my my childhood bedroom, and I came upon all the Polaroids. So I still That's have amazing. them. It's so strange. Amazing. That's so awesome. Yeah, I thought that was kind of cool. And then we are back at the school by the lockers, and Corey shows up. His hair is now huge and frizzy, and you know, even the weirdos, all Topanga and her weirdos, we all even you know laugh at him there, and he laughs at that. He knows, and he laughs at himself. He too, laughs which at is himself. Great. You know, yeah, he lightens up. He can laugh at himself a little bit. And then we have created a human barrier. We handcuff ourselves to the lockers. We are going to get everyone to sign the petition for Mrs. Rosemead. Um, there's a, a Don King <laughs> reference here. Also, can we talk about how obviously a bunch of kids have access to 15 pairs of handcuffs? <laughs> <laughs> which is which is totally yeah, normal. Both, both are, are absolutely locked and easily easily, easily unlocked. Exactly. <laughs> Fifteen uh, police Television. grade handcuffs. They just That's automatically amazing. have that. <laughs> just. I, I, yeah, it's so funny because like I I don't care. Like it's such no, a good of scene. Not. Like of I was not. so on board with this scene, and I was so glad also that Corey gets you know, gets a moment as a leader, as a, you know, he, it's not just that they are going to handcuff themselves. It's that he convinces them, you know, he argues yeah. with them. He, he does, he, he supports the cause. Um, I thought that was great. Great writing. You like, know, just so- one of the things I found interesting that I found a little bit jarring was this is the only time, maybe the only time because it starts to grow from there that Sean and Corey are literally and figuratively on different sides. Mm-hmm. I mean, I any other scene? Am I even in the? I scene? don't think so. But that's what I'm saying. But yeah. it's like you're not part. Like you were part of the more Marty York kind of yep. friendship scene. Cool kids, the right. cool yeah, kids, yeah. and they're never the in the future. Kids, yeah. They you would have been handcuffed with 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 Corey right next oh, to him. Absolutely. And yeah, so there yeah, was something interesting about that. They still hadn't quite found that yet. But no, it is also no. interesting that Sean isn't in that scene because Marty York is there. Yeah. He's the kid. He's the kid who calls uh, yeah. Ben I'll Don King. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah, sign yeah. it. I'm I'll signing sign it. it. I'm signing. And so it is. I wonder if that was like a deliberate choice that we weren't going to put Sean. Maybe. But I'll tell you why you can't have Sean in the scene because. Sean would have stayed, and you have to be able to get to kind of get in Corey alone. Right. Yeah. So yeah. there's a there's a kind of it's easy for the gang, the group, to walk off. Right. It's a yeah. little here. If you have an established character, yeah. Yeah, yeah. which is the same reason why Sean's character has to leave in the bedroom when you haven't established totally. a relationship with the parents, because then you're going to say, "Now, do these parents know Sean yeah. already, or is do this the punish- first time yeah. they're meeting him? Are they angry with him? Do yeah. they right. like you have Does to address?" Corey blame Sean? To, yeah, it becomes a whole. It becomes yeah, a whole different of- thing that they don't have time because for. Because Corey so. blames Sean in that first scene when. When Feeney says stinks and Corey goes stinks. Stinks, yeah. Right? But what do you think of me? <laughs> right, exactly. He's perfectly, perfectly happy to blame. Exactly. You know, He's happy to pass the buck there. It is also one of the most, if you go back and watch, one of the most unnatural exits ever is the four of them still handcuffed together backing I out of the scene. I laughed it so hard because so they, they were handcuffed and they notice. couldn't I didn't turn. Notice. They are literally backing up the stairs. And you the- could tell it was just like, get out of the scene. So they're just, the four of them handcuffed cuff trying to back oh, out of the funny. scene. It I was didn't notice at all. So funny. It is. It's, it was really funny. I noticed the same thing. So funny. Um, very funny. Oh. And then I was shocked while watching this that you cannot physically see me shaking. I was so oh. nervous. Well, wait, before we get to your nervous thing, because I think that's going to be very important and that has to be its own thing. Mm-hmm. Can we talk about Ben mouthing along with Marty York's lines? <laughs> <laughs> is that is that does oh, he really? Oh man, he does it's in not this scene. even it is not even subtle. I mean, he <laughs> we are just on Corey's face as he is just full on mouthing along with our, all of Mar- and I Marty. And he memorized the whole scene. It, <laughs> well, and I think it also speaks to his nervousness. This scene for us, I think Ben would probably tell you I was not his first kiss. I don't know. Ben was also 12. Um, yeah. I think Ben has said, no, it wasn't my first kiss. It was most certainly my first kiss. I had never oh, wow. kissed anybody. Um, we had not rehearsed the kiss throughout the week. We had rehearsed right. what was going to happen, you know, the pushing up against the lockers, but we didn't actually ever kiss. And it was being taped and we were filming it in front of the live studio audience. So we had never rehearsed the actual kiss. And I I was the most nervous of any hu- I've God, have you ne- don't seem like it at, at all. all. You, I, have, you have like you have the most confidence and poise. Like and it's so it interesting. Like when you just have that beat where you're like, 
oh, okay, or sure, yeah. or whatever you say, and you sort of look off to the side. It's just like such, I was, I, I was, I, I was, um, I remember being there looking at the monitor on, on tape night and just being so thrilled with that scene. And like, and I felt it again, watching it now, 29 yep. years later, I was like, oh my God, I remember this beat. It's so good. Yeah. It's so good. I was shocked you couldn't see me shaking because I remember oh, so my in insides being just a jumbled mess. And also, I remember, you know, my grandparents were there. And so not only am I doing this, it's tape night in front of this live studio audience. I've had this tumultuous week of getting the job, getting almost fired from the job, keeping the job, you know, s succeeding at the job. This is the last scene of the night. And my grandparents are about to watch me kiss a boy. And I've never <laughs> Wow. done it before oh and all these people not just my grandparents but like 200 people are gonna watch and I knew how important it was to the show and I was worried I was gonna like do it wrong or that I was gonna let somebody down and I knew that Ben was also very nervous and huh. uh I just remember thinking like oh my gosh, I'm never going to get through this. And when I watched it, I was so kudos to me. <laughs> I was so, I was, so I, cool. I yeah. was so cool. And the way I put so my hand cool. on my hip and like oh, looked away, amazing. I That's look amazing. so self-assured. Well, you yeah. just, something you just said, it, it resonates in such a, a way that it hadn't hit me until right now. From the note session to where you were crying to that kiss was three and a half days later. Not even. A note session yeah. was Monday afternoon That's to Thursday insane. night, exactly three days later. Three days later this entire journey for you was three days yes. that's nuts to me which that's for crazy. a 12 year old is like a year and a half oh yeah. like, man but that you know like crazy. as far as your brain changing rapidly like and you did you 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 rose to this challenge and you became this confident oh, you know because depending on that moment is acting like a 25 year old woman like, yeah and you believe it you completely believe it it's, yep. it's wonderful yeah. and then of course ben's expression is just like one of the most iconic things. He looks like, like one of those and, pencil toppers. And he has his lips tucked in because he didn't really want yep. me to kiss him. He's so like fully he's, tucked in. He's not, he's like <laughs> lips sucked in. I'm not really, He's our lips didn't really ever touch. Uh, yeah. And he, was, he was really nervous about kissing you for a number of reasons. Yeah, he was yeah. very nervous to kiss yeah. me. I remember yeah. that distinctly. So was I, so was I. Man. David, do you remember any of that, like, kid nervousness about a kiss? Was this the first time you had ever yeah. directed I mean, kids kissing? You said before, you, you didn't do it until you shot it because you didn't want to give up the, the newness. So yeah. save the newness till you have it during your photograph. But the other thing I was thinking as you guys were talking about this is any problem, a good actor understands that any problem is not the actor's problem, it's the character's problem. Hmm. And so the nervousness is to Panga's nervousness. And the control of the nervousness is to Panga's. And saying with Ben, you could do that way. And, and actors who are not in it, whatever it is, think it's the prop. I don't understand. <laughs> it's not the problem. It's the character. The candle's not being lit. It's not the actor's problem. It's the character. What yeah. So this kiss is really you, is, is you being a real actor. You and Ben being real actors. Because whatever you felt as actors, you made it the character. Yeah. Yeah, I can get emotional thinking about it. <laughs> like yeah. I, I just, <laughs> of it was such a, it was such a big moment. And we, and we really did, when I watch it, I think, those look like two kids that are really sure of what they're supposed to be doing. And I didn't feel that way, but we pulled it off. We, we look like we know what we're doing. Um, and I love, I didn't remember that her reasoning for doing it for all these years, I never really remembered why she, what she, why she did it. Like yeah. I knew that we kissed in that scene, but I didn't really get it. And I love the idea and the line because wouldn't it be interesting if you had if you're you always remembered for the rest of your life that your first kiss happened when you thought you looked your worst? Yeah, um, it's, it's very it's cool. It's very cool. Yeah, I just I, yeah, I love it. It make it gives me a different feeling on the scene because I yeah. I hadn't remembered that there was like that really deep meaning behind it. Well, we haven't really in any way, shape, or form, and I know we're at the end now. Discussed the meaning of the show, but the actual theme of the show of let's not care so much what other people think about you and just be comfortable in your own skin is hugely important. And that's the thing that still resonates with a lot of people about Boy Meets mm -hmm. World is you would get those messages without 
necessarily, you know, having to do a very special episode. Yeah. You know, so that was, that's, a, uh, I mean, that resonates through the generations that there comes, you can't care what other people think about you. And the, and doing that through the Topanga character, I thought was a great way of doing it. Somebody who was so confident at such a young age. Yeah. And showing that kind of like, I don't care what people think about me. I'm, I'm not the best version of me that I am, I thought was really cool. So yeah, that, that. That was one thing our show did very well without having to kind of spoon feed it to you yeah. until Ryder was an say, alcoholic for one episode. It's Michael. Yeah. Michael's inherently moralist. And, mm-hmm. and I don't mean that in a bad way, but I, I mean, he, he views television as a way to deliver messages. Yes. Yeah. So there are other shows that are wonderful in their own way that, that don't, don't deliver a message. They may have one coincidentally in there. But Michael's very much. This is the point. Yeah, a deliverer yeah. of me. Yeah, yeah. and and and, and it's, this episode succeeds very well to deliver what the meaning that Michael wants. To deliver. I thought so too. Yeah. yeah, and it's a great message still. And I love then we're the next scene, this, the final scene of the show. We're back in the cafeteria and, you know, Corey's hair is back to normal, which means Corey's life kind of goes back to normal and he's going to sit with his friends. But there's this really nice understanding that for one thing, they offer him a seat. The Topanga and her weirdos offer him a seat at their table and he isn't rude about it. He's it's a he just says, you know, I, I'm going to sit with them and we all understand. But we also let him know if you ever need to return, there's always a seat for you here. And, uh, you know, then Corey goes and sits back with his friends. And um, I remember the red hat moment Uh mm-hmm. And and the way we looked at each other. And I I feel like I don't know if that was always in the script throughout the entire week, because like David said in the last episode, we talked about how it's like there's always the possibility that a character is going to return. There's no way you watch that red hat moment and not think she's of com- course Topanga's Topanga coming is back. coming yeah, back. She's like, coming of course, back. she has to come back. Yeah. Um, and I so I remember specifically shooting that and wrapping that up and then being like. I think I'm going to have a job. <laughs> I, think I, I might be working. <laughs> Mama's getting paid. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm going to crimp my hair until 11 o'clock in, at night. Were you in every episode subsequent to that? Day? No. 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 She For, didn't become a regular until like season three. Yeah. yeah. Which that's what's weird. crazy. Yeah, that's amazing. Is that you, were, you, were, you weren't even guaranteed recurring for a while, were no, you? You were I just think, a guest? I think after this episode, I got um, guaranteed 13 for the rest okay. of that, for the rest of the season, but I didn't. I got paid for. I wasn't in actually thirteen. I right. think I got paid okay. yeah. for thirteen, but I only ended up being in eleven. And then I think the following season, I was also guaranteed thirteen, but maybe did more that season. Mm-hmm. Right. And then th- right. season three was when I was a full blown regular. Um, I got, how is it? You look back on that, it's like really Topanga wasn't a regular to season three. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. Well, I, you know, it was. It, there was also just a network. They only allowed so many yeah. regular. And we know, had a like, big and, cast, and, and, and it we was had a growing, big cast. and it was growing. Yeah. And I think before sight unseen, when the season started, Michael had added Minkus to the cast because he had already worked with Lee, and he knew Lee was a known entity. Yep. Um, you know, and that's again, you know, Lee wasn't around for the second season, so it, it's like you had right. to shuffle. There were only so many characters the budget of the network and then would tony allow. quinn came on second season didn't he second season yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so right. that so it's like we added another regular right there yeah tony quinn was, who played, who uh, played uh, mr turner uh, mr turner came on um and so yeah that we were just kind of adding characters and dropping characters and other characters coming on yeah. as guest stars it was they're still very much finding themselves um but yeah. oh, i look back at this episode there were so many iconic moments of this episode they're just this is a legendary episode. it is the yeah. most important episode in the history of boy meets world i'm convinced and David, I'm we just, have you to thank for so much of it. And, uh, yes. you know, as I started David the last Trainer. episode, you just you've been so impactful in all of our lives. Um, and we are so, so grateful that you came here and broke this episode down. And it, it I mean, you've I, you you taught me things, a million things. But even now I'm learning about how this whole process came to be. And I'm just so glad yeah. that you came and, and shared. Well, all I, that with really us. Pleased, I got your email. I thought, yeah, that sounds like it. First of all, to see you guys, but. It was, it was a great pleasure. But I thought, yeah, if I'm going to go back 29 years or whatever, it's more than that. Maybe. Uh, this is a really good way to do it. So thank you for asking. Well, thank you for, for being here and walking through it with yeah. us. I'm, I, I, again, I feel very safe. Been really great. Yeah. Yes. yeah. The way I always did. Yeah, you are a, a, an amazing conduit into uh, the world of acting. That's for that's for sure. So thank, well, thank you for that. Now we've all seen each other. Now we'll see each other again. It's I hope so. Time, so. I hope so. I've been to each other all over. 
I hope so. I absolutely hope so. Thank you, friends. Thank you for asking. Really great to see you all. And, Please come back uh, again. For doing this. Yes. Well, Please. well, you got how many? There are 148. You got 158. You got plenty. Plenty. You got to scrape yeah, in the we'll bottom. Have, of we'll have you in season two, <laughs> well, so you yes. don't have to come back soon. I mean, thanks. Really nice to see you. That was so wonderful to have him here and to break down that episode with us and to, um, man, pick his brain and hear his experiences. Yeah, you know, it's always like, I mean, I, I think it's, it, 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 it'll, it'll be interesting to hear from our, our listeners. Um, you know, I, we sort of take it for granted, like how important a director is. Absolutely. You know, but it, it's one of those positions, like I think for a lot of people, the, the, the separation of a producer and a director and a writer, it's all kind of jumbled together and it's hard to understand um, but really, um, the director is the the person who works the closest with the actors, um, and 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 spends all week rehearsing with them. So while Michael Jacobs has so much of the creative um, writing uh, control, uh, David was really the person in the trenches with us every day. And, yes. You know, and and whoever the director was that, and so it was so nice that he came back that he has all these positive memories of us, and and because I have such positive memories of him. Me yeah. too. Um, I, Me too. I look to him as a huge huge mentor in my life. Um, but I never, I haven't talked to him since, yeah. you know, since this, whenever he came back, I think in the sixth season, he, he directed an episode too, but you know, we never really talked. And, and we also just never, I, you know, I never understood that when he left the show, you know, he obviously went on to other things, but um, you know, I didn't, I, I was really nice to hear his thoughts on Michael and, 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 and the dynamic of our show um, because you know, when you're a kid, you just think that's the way all shows are. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I also think one of the things we tend not to do when our guest is actually on the air with us is is gush over them. And I, he's television royalty. I yes. mean, from designing women, Boy Meets World, that 70s show. That, I mean, this guy has has to to, to sit there and, and speak with him the way that we just did kind of as adults is so strange. But that's the thing that I'm still wrapping my head around with a lot of these conversations is having a conversation with these people that were so important when I was a kid to then sit down and talk to him again as an adult is so interesting to me. It's just a whole new Powerful. dynamic. Yeah. So, uh, we, yeah, thank you so much for coming on, David. And please come back. Yeah, I hope he yeah. does. Yeah. So, anyway, absolutely love that guy. Uh, Ryder, I agree with you. I, I, he's like a mentor in my life. And yet it's funny because, like you said, I've never seen him since. And he doesn't know that. So it's crazy to think that, like... You can have like you, he had such an impact in our life, and I guarantee you, he's never once thought, you know, I bet, I bet Danielle and Ryder and Will, I bet those guys think of me as a mentor. But yet, you could, <laughs> you could have no. had that much of an impact yeah. in somebody's life, and you have no idea. Well, more so yeah. for the two of you because this is what you do. You, got, as you both became yeah. directors and four camera director. I mean, you direct other things, but that's the kind of the bread and butter is the, the four camera sitcom. And yeah. this is the, this is the, the man you looked up to, to do it. So yeah. that's huge. And, 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 and his approach to acting. I mean, like listening to him talk about what he, how he, you know, in the process, like he understands it so well and, yeah. he, and he gives yeah. actors so much permission and support. And I remember, you know, you feel that as a kid, especially it was palpable that this person respected us, yeah. respected our input, wanted us to come up with our own stuff like that dance, yeah. Danielle, like the fact that he turned that back on you. Like any I've, I've worked with so many directors, especially directors who direct kids who are just like, give them a cookie and make them say the line. Yeah. You know? yeah, exactly. Like Just do the thing. Like, come on, do it like this. Let me give you a line reading. He never did that. Nope. And that it was like the greatest gift for us as actors. Um that we wouldn't have had otherwise. We no. would not have had that otherwise. And we had it immediately following David Trainer with Jeff McCracken for season three yes. and four. Yeah. So our yes. the first four years, the most formidable years of our, you know, TV careers were with two of the most incredible, like minded yep. directors yes. who were generous. Who giving, giving, yes. yes. Absolutely. And Supportive. it's also it's it's one of those things where you imagine how different the show would have been had it not started with David Trainer. Exactly. Uh, it would have just, yeah. all of us would have been different actors, we would have been diff different people if that was not the kind of anchor we had on the set every day for two seasons. So yeah, thank, 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 thank God he was there. Absolutely. Be sure to follow us on Pod Meets World Show on Instagram or email us your thoughts and opinions at podmeetsworldshow at gmail.com. And we have very exciting news that our first ever podcast merch is now merch available. It's coming out. We have Pod Meets World Show, which rolls right off the tongue for me, as you know. <laughs> Podmeetsworldshow.com is our website, and you can purchase our very first pod shirt merch. 
Pod shirt, pod merch shirt. Wow, pod. that's a tough one. Just let's just our pod merch. Our pod, pod merch. merch. Pod Purchase merch, which is good. Uh, Purchase the pod merch. <laughs> I'm still gonna come up with a song. We Guys, need a we song. Guys, we are professional we'll actors. There. Yes, we are. We are. Pod merch. Pod merch. That's easier. Pod Purchase meets, the pod merch pod on podmeetsworldshow.com. <laughs> right off the tongue. We love you all. Pod dismissed. Pod Meets World is an iHeart podcast produced and hosted by Danielle Fischel, Will Friedle, and Ryder Strong. Executive producers, Jensen Karp and Amy Sugarman. Executive in charge of production, Danielle Romo. Producer and editor, Tara Sudbach. Producer, Lorraine Verwez. Engineer and Boy Meets World superfan, Easton Allen. Our theme song is by Kyle Morton of Typhoon. Follow us on Instagram at Pod Meets World Show or email us at podmeetsworldshow at gmail.com.